salient parts about the small intestine. So this is the supine cadaver, this is the right side of the cadaver, this is the left side. Camera person is on the right side towards the leg end. We have removed the large intestine. So, and the small intestine is being held up by my assistant here. The first thing I wanted you to notice is the line of attachment of the small intestinal mesentery. The line of attachment is oblique, the way my finger is tracing. So it starts from the upper left quadrant. It starts from the transverse process, tip of the transverse process of L2 vertebra here, where my probe is pointing. And it goes obliquely down and it ends at the right upper sacroiliac joint, which is approximately here. So this is the line of attachment of the small intestinal mesentery. This is only 45 centimeters in length. This is the root of the mesentery. And from here, six to seven meters of small intestine come out in a highly coiled fashion. And we can see that here in front of us. So that brings me to the next point. The origin of the small intestine and the termination of the small intestine. So for the origin, I will put my finger here. This is the duodenal jejunal junction. And if I lift it up here, you can see the undersurface of the duodenum here. This is retroperitoneal, and here it becomes the jejunum, intraperitoneal. So this is the DJ flexure. And if when we dissect deeper, we will see a fibromuscular strand going from here upwards towards the right rest of the diaphragm, which is known as the suspensory ligament of trites. But that we cannot see in this dissection. We can see a small depression here. This is referred to as the paraduodenal fossa. This paraduodenal fossa is the fold of peritoneum, which has been produced by the retroperitoneal duodenum coming up into the intraperitoneal jejunum. And this is a potential site of internal herniation. What makes this internal herniation more risky is because on the free margin of the paradiodinal fossa is running this vein that we can see here. This is the inferior mesenteric vein accompanied by the inferior mesenteric artery. The inferior mesenteric vein runs up in the free margin of the paradiodinal fossa. If a loop of intestine is trapped here and we are trying to remove it and we try to cut the fold of peritoneum, we are likely to injure the inferior mesenteric vein. The artery forcep is holding the cut portion, cut end of the terminal ileum, which was communicating with the cecum, which has been removed. So this is the region of the ileocecal junction. So therefore, the duodenal flexure is up in the left upper quadrant, and the ileocecal junction is in the right lower quadrant. So that also tells us that the line of attachment of the mesentery is oblique like this. Okay, now I will show you the vascular supply of the small intestine. And for so now my assistants, as you can see, all of them are stretching out the small intestine here. And we can see the vascular supply of the jejunum and the ileum. This is the ileum, that's the region of the jejunum. Because the small intestine is part of the midgut, they're all branches of the superior mesenteric artery. Superior mesenteric artery is the artery of the midgut. The branches, there are not one, there are literally hundreds of them. All of them run in the layers of the mesentery. And this is the mesentery. They run in the two layers of the mesentery. And we can see the two layers which we have dissected out here. And they learn in the areolar tissue between the two layers. The proximal two-fifths are referred to as the jejunal branches and the terminal three-fifths are referred to as the ileal branches. The veins accompany the arteries and all of them drain into the superior mesenteric vein, which is to the right of the superior mesenteric artery. So this is the superior mesenteric vein and this is the superior mesenteric artery. We have lymph nodes in the layers of the mesentery and they are respectively referred to as the juxtaintestinal, mesenteric, and superior central central lymph nodes, and then we have the superior mesenteric nodes. So that's about the lymphatic drainage and the blood supply of the small intestine. Now I'm going to tell you how to differentiate the jejunum from the ileum. First, let's take a look at the intestinal wall itself. So we are holding up the terminal ileum in front of us, and we can see that it is thin, it is pale, it is relatively avascular. This has got an important clinical correlation. Whenever we are doing intestinal surgery on the ileum, any resection and anastomosis, we have to take special precautions because avascular necrosis of the ileum is much more common than the jejunum. In contrast, let us compare it with a loop of jejunum which I have brought next to the ileum. And we can clearly see that the jejunum is thick, it is fleshy, it is pink in color, and it is more vascular. So that's about the intestinal wall itself. The next point that we notice is since we are already on the jejunal side, if we hold up the jejunum like this, now my assistant is holding up a loop of the jejunum to show the mesentery. We notice several things. Number one, we notice that the amount of fat inside the mesentery of the jejunum is very limited. On the other hand, we notice that the blood supply which is traveling in the mesentery towards the mesentery surface of the intestine, there are only one levels of vascular arcades. And arising from the vascular arcades, we have these long vasa recta, 
which are traveling in the mesentery and they're reaching the mesenteric side of the intestine. So this is what we notice about the jejunum and we can clearly see it through the light. This is how we actually do it during surgery also. In contrast, now my assistants have held up a loop of the terminal ileum. Straight away we notice that the mesentery is thickly laden with fat, so much so that we can hardly see through it. Not only that, the fat is also actually encroaching onto the intestinal wall itself. And we have split one layer of the mesentery here to show the blood supply inside. And we notice that the ileal arteries, there are multiple levels of vascular arcades, several generations of them, two, three, four generations. And from the apex of the arcades, we have small vasa recta, which are going to the mesentery side of the ileum. And now we are going to hold both of them side by side. So in this classical dissection, we can clearly see the differences between the jejunum and the ileum regarding their vascularity. We can see the jejunum, the blood vessels are long, there is just one series of vascular arcades and then we have long vasa recta. In contrast, let's take a look at the a segment of the ilium and for that we have turned it slightly and we can see that there are multiple vascular arcades here and small vasa recta. And we can see that the ileum mesentery had much more fat, so therefore it required much more dissection and some of the fat is also encroaching onto the wall of the intestine. Where the blood vessels enter, that is referred to as the mesenteric border and the opposite border is referred to as the anti-mesenteric border. So that is about the jejunal ileal differences as far as the vascularity is concerned. Jejunum, ileum. Now my assistant is cutting open a segment of the ileum. My assistant has opened up a segment of the terminal ileum and we can see straight away after cleaning it up, we can see that the mucosal folds are very minimal or almost none. That is why Wangenstein has referred the surface of the ileum as structureless. And if we were to do a low microscopic examination of the submucosa, we might be able to see pear patches. But grossly, we cannot see any pear patches. So that is what we see in the ileum. Now we will open a segment of the jejunum. Now we have cut open a segment of the jejunum. And straight away we can see that the mucosal folds are dense, thick, and much more numerous. This is referred to as the valvulae conventis or the plicae circularis. This is to increase the surface area for absorption. And this is the one which when we do a barium meal follow through, this gives what is known as a feathery appearance to the barium meal. A berry meal follow through to show the feathery appearance of the jejunal mucosa. Now we are going to hold a jejunal mucosa side by side with an ileal mucosa to show the comparison. So up here we can see the jejunal mucosa and then down here we can see a segment of the ileal mucosa. And when we hold them side by side we can see the comparison. So this is jejunum versus ileum. Ilum is referred to as structureless, jejunum is referred to as feathery appearance. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Dr. Sajjo Sanel signing off. Have a nice day.